This is a classic run. I have a knight, thief, white mage, black mage, as you can see. Uh, they can't move their uh, abilities around. Uh, that's one of the parameters of the natural run. We're going to start by putting shell on some characters. So shell is going to protect us from the magic attacks coming in. It's going to protect us from white hole that's coming in. The Ragnarok on the knight is going to be hopefully doing nice damage. Good. Thank you. Um, the Black Mage has the Wizard Staff, and we're going to be just sticking right now with just the Aga level spells. Uh, the Shell is going to help us maybe dodge White Hole. Uh, White Hole turns you to stone and uh, KOs you. Uh, very good X-Death attack. Um, he went for one of the characters who was protected by the Mirage Vest, so now the Knight can reset her Mirage Vest when she gets her turn now. So she is once again protected from physical attacks. Black Mage can stay on the offensive. The Shell is going to be helpful not only for White Hole here, but possibly in the next phase if we do eat an Almagest. It just might keep us alive. If we have an Almagest coming our way, it just might keep our characters on their feet. We will see. <laughs> Um, the knight, for sure, has enough hit points to survive an Almagest incoming with Shell on. Um, the other characters, I believe, may have just enough, but they get, get into leak status afterwards, and so depending on the timing of things, um, we might be, uh, in, in too much trouble. So that holy, look at that damage there, even with the Shell on, enough to KO that knight. So now we're going to be looking at casting, um, Arise. This is like Life 2. So it's a life spell with full health. Uh, just one action to uh, put her back up. Now she needs to get a turn to reset her Mirage Vest because if x -Def has another uh, physical attack on her, she's going to go down again. That's another thing. When a character is revived like that, they are, uh, they're pretty susceptible. They're pretty vulnerable. So let's try to shell her one more time. Uh, the next form of x -Def, Neo x -Def, one, one or more of the pieces has uh, Dispel among their uh, routine. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. Um, I'm gonna hang on to it here. I think I'm actually going to Elixir up here. It's, it's uh, slightly, we're in a slightly dangerous time here to do that, but what you want to be in good shape when the Neo X Death fight rolls around. And, uh, but you also, on the same token, don't want to leave this form of x -Death in a uh, weakened state because Holy might, or Holy and uh, Meteo might be incoming. So you want to try to, once this one is uh, partway through its routine, um, through its hit point uh, routine, I should say, about halfway through and less in its total health, which we should be well uh, into that now, you want to try to rush it down if, if you can. So now we're going to switch from Shell to Holy, and hope that we can get into the Neo X Death battle in uh, in as, as healthy a form as we can. So we're just doing as much damage as we can. Okay, so we're in a pretty healthy state. The Black Mage is just about to get his turn. The Black Mage has an, a roughly 8%, I think it's 7.8% to land break on the Almagest piece on any single attempt. So this strategy here is going to have the... Uh, Black Mage is going to, no matter what, attempt to break the Almagest piece. The White Mage is going to first priority try to keep Shell on as many characters as possible, stay alive herself, of course. Um, and then our physical attackers are going to start beating the Grand Cross, try to get it uh, to skip Grand Crosses. So if everything goes according to schedule, which it was almost never happens in these fights, um, we will land break before Almagest comes up, although we may actually survive it if we are at full health when it lands. Uh, and then we can go to work on the Grand Cross piece with everybody. Now, we can definitely, if we have all four characters working on the Grand Cross piece, then we can rush it down through its routine, no problem. But with just two, I'm a little bit worried. So I'm hoping to land break and I'm hoping to land it early. I have to be reactive to what I'm seeing here, so I have to really um, focus. Thief, attack the Grand Cross, okay? Uh, Black Mage, we are going to break Almagest. Let's see, okay. It's 8%, it's so 8 out of 100, not, not a huge um, percent. The White Mage, um, I'm kind of between wanting to cast Blink on herself which I think I'm going to do. I'm going to cast Blink on herself because the, the front part of X-Death can be 
pretty nasty with uh, with its attack. So we're gonna have the thief again. Ideally, you would love in a normal situation run. There's the knight's action. Okay. In a normal situation run, you would want black magic on all four characters so that you could have everybody casting break on the Almages piece. We do not have that luxury with this party. So we have to try to land it with what we have. Everybody's still shelled, which is good. Um, she's blinked, which is fine. I'm actually going to maybe blink the black mage here. Uh, X-Death is starting to shake. That means that Almages is coming. I think I have maybe two more attempts at it. Uh, Delta attack. Oh, it's going to land on the knight. Okay, um, and the knight is going to be stone, put to stone. That's not too bad. Let's see if break can land. Okay, nope. Uh, the thief can bring back the knight. If I'm using the, the correct item, that is. Uh, the knight's vulnerable now to physical attacks. Ooh, good. The blink was, um, was effective. Very good. So the knight is vulnerable to physical attacks. Um, let's get shell back on the knight. And then I actually need to... Uh, heal the knight if the, if we can get an action with someone who can heal the knight. There we go. Because I would like that knight at full health when Almagest lands and with shell on. Okay, so there was break missing again. Um, the knight looks like... Okay, looks like everybody's in okay shape, so... Or did I miss... Uh, I miss resetting her, um, her shield. Alright, so let's see. Alright, that's actually... That's Almagest right there. And right now, the White Mage is almost ready to get a turn to cast Cure 3. So we are actually in business if... Okay, so this can happen too. You have a, an attack immediately after it from another piece. Oh, it's Dispel. All right, so that's actually not the worst thing that can happen. So a Dispel came up. We've got to get Cure 3. All right, let's fire it. The Black Mage is going to go back to work on the Almagest piece while the physical attackers are going to hopefully try to... Um, Stop a girl. Um, so this is where you start to get a little bit behind the eight ball with X-Step a little bit. You start to get in trouble. Okay, still nothing there. Uh, the white mage is the one who is going to protect us now. So dispels start to come in. Um, let's do this. Okay, so yep, Shell on herself. And Shell did a great job of chopping the damage from Almagest. So we can actually... I'm feeling better about our chances. If we don't get too far behind on healing and too far behind on... Um, well, on damage and hit points. And we have to land break eventually. One of these uh, 1 in 8 chances has to land. There's Flare on the Knight. So I think that's going to be a KO on the Knight. 1036, okay. Ooh, 1206. Okay, so there was a uh, vacuum wave, I think, on the uh, White Mage. So here's where, um, in every X-Death, Neo-X-Death battle, if you're if you're not dealing with... F this is where you start to get behind. So you can see that we've missed, like, six or seven of the, of the stone attacks. All right, let's see what statuses we've got. Uh, sto two stones, a mute, and... Okay, it looks like a poison. All right, um, and X-Death will eventually, if things don't turn around for us um, pretty soon, because Almagest is going to be coming, and right now we only have, what, one character with a shell up, and there's a white mage down again. So this is, again, where you can see you get behind the eight ball a little bit, and the black mage has to remain aggressive. The Black Mage just has no choice. The Black Mage has to um, keep attempting to break. Okay, so there's another miss. There's Holy. And that's the Thief going to go down. And, you know, eventually your characters, even with a lot of speed, they will start to um, fall behind because Grand Cross is uh, usually requires several actions to recover. You can see we're still not quite recovered from it. Um, let's, oh boy, let's get a Cure 3 up. I'll see if my physical fighters can reset their Mirage Vest status, and then we have to try to see who we can um, get shells on before the next uh, Almagest comes. Here's another attempt at break. Let's see. Okay, so good. Glad I reset. All right, break landed. 
right there. You can see I paused it at a pr that perfect frame. So now we can focus our attention on Grand Cross and hopefully avoid another Grand Cross coming in. So that piece of x def is gonzo, and we now need to start dealing some damage. I'm not sure, okay, so the Black Mage is just poisoned. And we can do really good, really fast damage to that Grand Cross piece. Oh, cool, thank you. Wow, so a physical attack came in, but it, uh, it missed. Very cool. Um, let's do that. We're gonna keep the aggressive damage going into the Grand Cross piece and try to hopefully skip seeing Grand Cross again. Um, this is, it's pretty old news, of course, with this, with this, uh, with this boss, but, uh, the Grand Cross piece will change its routine based on, uh, where it is in its hit points, and if you can get it from different hit point thresholds fast enough, you can avoid seeing Grand Crosses, so that's the good news for that. Alright, so Ferris is now protected from the Mirage Vest again. Okay, uh, the White Mage is going to stay aggressive with Holy, I believe. Oh, you know what? I actually need to get my Magic Lamp charged up. So I'm going to have my White Mage use the Magic Lamp. I'll have my Black Mage do the same. Okay. Black Mage will do the same right here. This is Leviathan. All right, what's the damage? Okay, as you can see, it's a little less than what Bahamut was able to do. Now, if we see another The Laws of Physics Are Broken prompt, that will mean that... Oops, I don't want to use that again. Not yet. That will mean that we have successfully pushed this Grand Cross piece into another part of its routine. I'm going to have the Black Mage stay aggressive. I'll have the Thief revive her, because the thief, I saw the Thief was getting a turn, and the Thief right now is doing the least damage, so the Thief can be a designated uh, item chucker. Okay, so there's another prompt. That means that we have pushed it into another threshold, so we have, we've skipped a Grand Cross, basically, there is what that means. Essentially, we have skipped a Grand Cross. Um, I'm going to wait until this um, this Fire 3 goes before I cast this Holy. So I want to make sure I can target correctly. All right, so you may have just heard that the top Grand Cross piece is gone. So now I can go to work on the front piece. And as soon as the front piece uh, perishes, then we will use the Magic Lamp again. And that will take out the uh, back piece, and that will finish the battle. But we have to be kind of careful about our timing here. Ooh, all right, Flare on the Black Mage. Again, my Thief will be my designated item chucker. Uh, but first, she needs to change the Chicken Knife. And yes, that will reset her uh, Mirage Vest status, even if she doesn't attack. So if you change the weapon around, uh, that will make that change for you. My mages and the knight are both doing 3,000-ish. Yeah, 3,300 from Holy. Holy's doing a really great job because it's a big attack spell that's getting boosted by the Sage Staff. Uh, Thief is not doing as much. Looks like I stole something there. I'm not exactly sure what, though. That was kind of fun. All right, so now I'm going to go into the phase where I start to line up turns. So I will make sure that someone else has an action coming up before I take an action. It'll mean that we take some hits that we don't necessarily need to take, uh, which is kind of sad, but, you know. Oh, so there, here we're taking two hits that we don't need to take. So that's where, when you let the ATV run, you can run into stuff like that. But all these pieces of X-Death only have single targeting stuff. These, these last two can only do single targeting, but if they get into their um, desperation mode, or their berserk mode, we sometimes call it, yeah, it's too bad. When you let the ATV run like that, you can kind of get behind even with these single targeting things and with a lot of speed when you're trying to have two characters lined up. So I'm going to get two lined up here, though. This will be... I'll be able to do it here. Okay, there's two characters lined up. Let's try a flare. I just want I'm just curious on a flare on this front piece. Yeah. 
See, it's not as impressive as you would you would want it to be. All right, uh, so we have more than one lined up, but we do have a character down. That's okay. All right, so the thief can now just revive. Not a problem. And there you have the game's checking for things right now. The ATB holding there, the game's checking for things. All right, Dispel just takes away her shield, but she can just uh, bring that back up. That's not a problem for her. All right, we have a couple turns lined up. Let's cast that boosted Fyraga again. All right. All right, so we'll change her items and mug. And we actually have all four turns lined up, so I will cast Holy here and listen for the uh, the perishing sound. Okay, didn't hear the perishing sound. Nope, so I need to now wait with the knight here. But someone else will probably get uh, knocked down by an ability. Okay, yep, so there's one knocked down. I do like to keep all four characters up if I can. We have two lined up now, though. Okay, so we had two lined up, and that's why I knew it was safe. If I was counting HP better, I would know exactly when to start doing this, but... Oh, oh cool, there was a miss. Now we've got four lined up. Let's listen. Okay, so here's the third action. If it fades away here, then I can use the magic lamp with my knight. Okay, nope. Still not there yet. I think I was a little bit too early in going into this um, this pattern, this, this mode. I was a little bit too aggressive in going into this mode, but I like to play it safe when I can, when I'm not counting hit points. So first, let's uh, change that weapon. Make sure that we are ready to go. All right. Okay, there was, there's Dispel, so I, I actually don't know. If I change the weapon again, maybe that'll uh, reset it for me. It looks like it did. That's pretty cool. All right, I have three more actions lined up. Let's see. I hope the next one is the White Mage again. Yes, it is indeed, so let's see. Yeah, I, was, I guess I was very aggressive. I thought that I had been doing pretty good damage before I started this, but maybe I was only a quarter or a, or a third of the way through. We should be getting close now, though. These, uh, these parts all have just north of uh, 50,000 hit points. Let's get some turns lined up. Okay, Black Mage is ready. Oops, let's get one or two more ready. And even doing this strategy, you're not totally safe because there is a little bit of ATB movement between... That was the fading away. So here's where I just confirm. Yep, I try to target, and if it targets just the back one, then I know that the front one is gone. Uh, sometimes there, there are some ATB ticks that go by as you're waiting between moves to happen. So like magic charging time. And that, and sometimes x can sneak things in, or sometimes you can... Um, take one part out and then before another person can can act um, that last piece will do something silly like Almagest which with no shells on Almagest would be an instant game over for us instant game over for us but that was the first attempt at X-Death that was the first battle that I fought with X-Death in this run, and it was successful. We missed a bunch of breaks, which I was expecting. We did hit one. Um, I'd say probably close to the last one that we could have handled. Um, it, you probably saw that we were starting to get behind on uh, keeping characters alive because the, the attacks start coming in a little more quickly. Uh, Grand Crosses start to really affect you. We got a pretty nasty Grand Cross there. Two stones... Um, the, the, out of that one. The other ones, the, the mute from the thief and the poison from the black mage didn't really uh, hurt us, but the two stones did, requiring a couple different actions. Charm and stuff could be nasty in there as well. But you can see that uh, a party like this without 
multiple characters doing black ma magic and white magic uh, really d restricts you when you only have certain things available to one character and everyone else can only use items. So we were getting behind and a few more rounds would have all would have been probably all we had before the second Almagest came and we were likely not going to be able to get shell up on enough people to survive that next Almagest because remember to survive the Almagest you need all four characters with shell and full health. You need, you need everybody who's who's there to have shell and full health and they were getting characters were getting knocked out and then you have to reapply shell but remember you know you only have one caster of shell who can put it on at a time so we had characters kind of all over the place there so close to the the end of where we could have had it pretty decent I'll, i can maybe in in my rewatch count how many attempts at break we had i think it was maybe eight or something eight percent chance to land I always love doing my classic run. I usually do it on the second run of my fiestas. I don't know why I do it on the second one, but it usually is my second run is the classic run. I want to do one every year. I have got really lucky with the balanced party this time. It wasn't something like a bunch of thieves and monks uh, mixing it up. Um, Red mage of like, but you without the ability to move higher level magic on, it's hard to uh, get excited about dual casting fire two against Neo Xdef. I know there are a lot of people, a lot of proponents of Red Mage, and it's great, but it can really be a hold, a downer in the end of the game. So it is uh, July 1st, 2020, as I'm recording this. It's a funky place out there. It's been a really weird year for all of us, not only in the Fiesta community, but around the world. So before I sign off, I just want to encourage everybody to stay safe and take care of each other out there. Be excellent to each other, have fun, be nice, and we will see you in run three.